so Raheem Sterling um, obviously in the news yesterday because didn't feature uh, at the weekend uh, not in Chelsea's lineup against Manchester City not in Chelsea's squad and the thing that worried uh, his representatives was that not that long ago the new man in charge Enzo Maresca was on record during pre-season saying Sterling is an important player for us so what happens now um, his representatives we were told yesterday seeking a, a discussion with Chelsea about the situation I understand there was a conversation between Chelsea and his representatives yesterday where it's gone is open to debate but last night Gary Neville on Sky Sports threw in his threepensworth regards Sterling he's experienced now and I think if he's looking at everything that's happening behind the scenes there, for him to do what he did yesterday, he must be seeing stuff that he doesn't like and feels like he needs to punch back. And he might be punching back on behalf of himself, but he may be punching back on behalf of Gallagher. He may be punching back on behalf of Chalabar, who's with the development squad. He might be thinking, I've got to alert, yeah, I've got to alert, pe- I've got to alert people to what's going on here. And the only way I can do that is through my own situation. Now, because it is unusual to put a statement out like that, and I wouldn't expect Raheem Sterling to have done that. What's he doing then? What is he doing then? Now, you and I and Sunas threw this about uh, yesterday. Yep. And again, I stress, uh, it's my understanding, Simon, there was a conversation because Chelsea were under a bit of pressure to do something yesterday uh, regards him, maybe amongst others. Uh, and I think there was a conversation between uh, the club and his representatives yesterday. And I think we'll find out more in the fullness of time. Now we hear that Juventus, and as you say, they are a true giant of European football. We hear that Juventus have made an inquiry to sign Sterling as the uncertainty over his future continues. I think now, between now and the end of the window, I think the sensible bet would be that Raheem will move. But, yeah, I would think so. Might be a loan, might be a sale. I mean, Chelsea are in no particular hurry to, to, to have to offload Raheem Sterling um, economically because they've got him for three years. If they can't get the structure that they want, then maybe they'll loan him because they retain the asset on their balance sheet and maybe get a significant proportion of his wages covered. Maybe, you know, if you want to invoke conspiracy theories, maybe they made it. I don't know the context in which the Chelsea manager said, you're a valuable player. I don't know the full quote in terms of what he actually said. Mm. All I know is the soundbite which says he's a valuable player. It might mean he's a valuable player because he's worth some money to us. We can sell him. I don't know that. Well, I, don't know- I mean, the, the, the truncated version is selling is an important player for us. Well, it can't be that important. If it uh, yeah. was that important, it'd be in the squad well, uh, for Saturday. I don't know whether the, the manager. I don't know whether the manager's being a diplomat, fielding a question. We all know that managers say one thing and often do another. Yeah. And so in the in the instance, it was hardly going to say. I don't know the question he was asked. If he just suddenly popped up for no reason and said, "By the way, you didn't ask this, but I'm just going to tell you, Raheem Sterling is a very important player," then you turn around and say, "Well, that's a bit strange with what would happen now." But if somebody asked him a question, "What about Raheem Sterling? Is he an important player?" and he said, "Yes, he's a very important player," I think that's probably what happened. So do I. So that gives it a bit more context. Text because ultimately, what was he going to say? No, no, no we're going to bin him. Um, you know, he 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 has to say a certain thing. So I don't know whether Chelsea Chelsea's stance was Machiavellian. Was it to get Sterling to say something in the media that compromises his contract with Chelsea and puts him in breach of his contract so they can get out of their obligation, or was it just a clear message to Raheem Sterling? We're changing the direction of travel. You're not part of it, so we're we're going to need to find a solution. So so whether people think that it's the right way to do it. Mm. It's kind of incidental. Well, I mean, even though you continue to a degree, and uh, Sunas was going down this route yesterday, that to a degree you still back bullying and ballet. I don't. I don't. I think what they're doing, I think, is slightly ridiculous. I think the amount of money that they're spending is slightly ridiculous. So you go with the headline this morning uh, over Martin Samuel's uh, column in, in, the, in the Times, the Chelsea model spend £112 billion and fail to improve European champions. Well, they haven't spent £112 billion for a start because you'd have to go some way to spend 112 billion. <laughs> They've spent about three and a half billion. Um, and I, I beg your pardon, 1.12 yeah, billion. Right. So, so billion. with that in mind, I, I don't know whether Chelsea's model is based upon what they think the capital value of this business is likely to be in five or ten years' time. If they believe that Chelsea Football Club... There's a, there's a really difficult line that I try balancing in the media, which is from the entertainment value of, here it is, let's say something about it now, uh, as opposed to the considered pragmatic commercial mind that I sometimes have, which goes, well, what's the method to this particular madness? Why would you operate this way? Is it because you're involved in Brewster's millions and you want to rid yourself as much money as you possibly can as quickly as you possibly can? Or do you believe that there's something further down the line that you're going to be able to achieve by the stance that you're taking? Right. So do you it's think... It's going to be the latter, hasn't well, it? it? You would think... But, but Simon, would I think mean, that, that headline though, 1.12 billion and fail to improve them. 
Well, they've been proved from season to season, didn't they? A billion plus and they they're, don't get better. Their first season, well, they've spent 1.3 billion euros and they've received back 600 million euros. So they've spent net about 800 million pounds. Significant amounts of money. They yes. got sixth in the league last year. If they improve again this season, then, you know, this would be commensurate with some of the spending, with due respect, that Arsenal have spent over recent seasons. Not the same level, but, but notwithstanding that. Mm. They have a different attitude towards it. If you're trying to build a football club that you think, for a variety of different reasons, has a potential value in five, ten years' time, of 12 or 13 billion quid you don't mind spending two and a half million pounds to buy it and maybe two or three billion pounds to build it and if it's also got other commercial values to you in terms of the brand association the benefits of association for other businesses and also you're trying to unlock other markets because football's become a global play now for a whole variety of reasons it might be that the conventional orthodoxy of Luddite thinking which says here and now here and now isn't quite the way that they think and when Martin Samuel writes an article talking about the transfer marketplace which I've glanced at it's dead they spent 1.5 billion so far in the transfer market. How's the transfer market dead? Not Chelsea, but the transfer market. But I think, I think now more and more fans are becoming alienated or feel that they're becoming alienated yeah, towards yeah. their own in club. In the here and now, in the but micromanagement. The here and now is the important time. And and five years ago or four years ago, I had the misfortune of spending some time in the studio with that guy from AFTV that was all about the toxicity of Arsenal fan base and how much they disliked their football club and how the club was crap and everything was awful. They don't think it's crap now, do they? They've had a pivot. Stan Kroenke's had a pivot. He's put his son in there, whether it was the European Super League or whether it was a bid from Spotify to buy the football club, changed the direction of travel, changed the investment structure. All of a sudden, Arsenal are a model football club again. And the fans are back on board. Yeah, but Arsenal weren't European champions. They did, they weren't Champions League winners. So what? They were one of the biggest clubs in English football. They were they were the invincibles. They were but the they weren't post- winning things. Well, they, they, they weren't winning things on the level that Chelsea have been winning things. And that's fine. And the argument about Chelsea is... Nowhere near it. No, granted. But there was also criticism about the way Chelsea did it. Chelsea basically brought managers in, won something with him. You didn't win it the way we liked you to win it. Out, next manager in. But and you people criticise that. To a large degree, though, I think you're giving yourself a pass in this because you're saying, further down the line, things will change. No, I'm trying to... I'm Don't judge Bolinic, Bally and Chelsea in the here and now. What else can we no, do? No, no, no. What you else have, can we do? It depends which prism you want to look for it through. I, I said it at the top of the conversation, in the hysterical world of here and now, which is the real world, and certainly the real world of the media where you have to micro-analyse things, you are absolutely right to put it through that prism because we're in the business of bow ties, shiny shoes and entertainment. In the, in the commercial world where there's a considered set of, of parameters as well... Oh, I, I see. That, I, unlike the media world. Well, no, not really, because media sensationalises and wants to be able to light upon something, then forgets about it when media something comes along. Media reports the facts. Media is considered no, as well. Media you're create, in the media. You media, should know that Media creates a version of facts and a, a, a prism to look through, which is instantaneous judgment. And I understand the reasons why. I'm not criticising it. I'm saying I walk a different line. I go, right, I understand my role as an entertainer. We've got to make this entertaining. But the other part of my brain, which was once upon a time a businessman, looks at it and goes, well, what's my considered view about some of the profligacy that appears to be happening at Chelsea? Mm. Why are these things happening? What are they trying to achieve here? I'm trying to. Work- they might be loons. It might be simply that they are absolutely what people are describing them as, as absolutely profligate, irresponsible, don't know what they're doing, they're going to destroy the fan base of Chelsea. They're not going to do that, I don't think. Um, well, they, I mean, obviously no more they're than not Kate out to do that. When he put up electric fences. They're not out to do that, Simon, but they're not winning over many Chelsea fans, fans of their own club at this moment. There's Jim West Ham fan, he's a contributor regularly on the show. Go on, Simon, you're securing yourself another fancy lunch with Todd. That's the kind yeah, but, but it's a that's silly. A, but that's I know, silly. But, that's that, silly. but that's a perception many people have out there because you're used to money and you're used to dealing at a high level. Yeah. So are they. So people are thinking, you'll side with them. No, I'm not siding with them. I think that the spend pattern and some of the deals... I think buying Enzo Fernandez for £1.105 uh, it was absurd and bidding against himself. When you bid in an auction, it's because you bid against someone else. You don't bid against yourself. I think some of the transactions that they've done, but the classification of it, to my mind, isn't right. It isn't the way that people are necessarily looking at. Some of it is, but not all of it is. Well, so there's a chance I, I, can, I, can, I, can join the, I can join the easy ride. I can jump on the train I know and go, that. idiots, I know morons, that. profligates, ridiculous. All they're doing is creating well, more and more problems. Well, it's down to this, then. There's a, there's a message from a Chelsea fan hasn't left his name, but that's by the by. I have a question for Simon. I've worked with Americans, and their focus on return, in an, on an investment, is totally different from what we see in the Correct. UK. Are we being short-sighted, Correct. then, as they play the long game? Yes, I think there's an element of that, but you can't. You have to live in the here and now because you're in a here and now business. If we didn't, if we didn't live in the here and now as a broadcaster, then there would be nothing for us to talk about. 
So you have to live in the here and now. Of but when course. You, when you then conflate yeah. that into the commercial yeah. world, did they buy Chelsea because they wanted instantaneous uh, return? Could they buy if they could have bought Chelsea for two and a half billion quid mm. and sold Chelsea the next day for five billion quid? They'd have done it. I'll counter that. Producer Luke and I went to this briefing. Before the start of last season, yep. when Dodd, Todd Bully said, "And he said, I'm not going to screw to, around. Yeah. I'm not here. To, we're not here to screw around." Fine. What does that suggest to you? That they believe that they have a model that's going to build them success, and they're going to be committed to what they're doing. We're going now to hit you, the ground running. That's you trans, what it suggested you translate, to me. You translate. Have yeah, they hit the ground running? And that, well, clearly not on football terms, Correct. and clearly not in financial terms. Yeah. But there is an element of you have to you have to look at the bigger picture to some extent I understand why people don't want to and I understand that ultimately it's my my constant analogy is football people go oh there's always another game so I'm almost playing that logic out in the commercial world but this is a, also a longer term play and whether football fans like it or they don't right there, there is a distinct possibility that Chelsea will be successful again Maybe not in the short order that you would expect with this kind of spend. But the point I was making yesterday was all of this offendedness on behalf of Chelsea's spend pattern. I couldn't care less if Chelsea spend hundreds of millions of pounds as long as it doesn't compromise what my football club is doing. So all this concern and ridicule, that's the nature of the beast. It's like being in America, talking to the American NFL guys saying that the people in, foot, in the NFL believe they're all business partners. The people in the football boardrooms believe they're all enemies. There's no common symmetry. Okay. But I think that Chelsea, somewhere along the line, will get it right. But in the here and now, they have to accept the parody because their team isn't doing what 1.3 billion euros should do in the perception of people that have had a football club in the past that bought its way to success, ended with an oligarch, former robber baron, being booted out, and a football club that was almost in disarray. Okay, well, the, head, the headline on Martin Samuel's column this morning in the, in the Times, the Chelsea model, spend 1.12 billion and fail to improve European champions. And on Raheem Serling, I understand there was a chat yesterday between his representatives and the club, but we don't know the outcome yet, but we will. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.